Hello everyone. So I wanted to give a little update video here on the ILG projects. Uh, the last video that I posted dealing with ILGs I believe was on the very sad Model 183. And that project I put on hold for a little bit. Um, just because I had some other things I wanted to get knocked out of the way first. I want to be able to really focus on that project when I get to it. Um, so I remembered that I had this. This is an ILG Industries Model 163 panel mount fan. It does not have the panel, as you can see. It's just the guard and the motor and the blade. But, um, but I do have a use for this fan. I'm going to be using it in a wood shop to uh, help pull sawdust out of the air and uh, exhaust it. So uh, I think it'll be a perfect place to use this fan since... It's not altogether, it ain't the prettiest fan in the world, but it will certainly serve its purpose as an exhaust fan. Um, and I can easily, I have a hole in the side of the wall where I actually have a, a different Model 163 that I'll be taking down from there. And this will go right in there with no problem. Now, when I got this fan, it was completely seized. You could, you could turn the blade, but you had to exert a lot of force on it to get it to even move and as soon as you let go it would it, it stopped like it did not freewheel at all it was just very seized up and now you can see obviously it spins nice and freely um this one has the totally enclosed type motor which is another reason i'm going to be using this for the wood shop environment i feel like that'll be excellent for keeping the motor clean not getting full of sawdust. Um, even though the standard ones, I mean, they're the self-cooling design they have where it pulls in the air from the vent tube. It's supposed to prevent that, but there's still, you get some blow-by with very heavily dusty air and it will get sucked back in through and get into the motor. So uh, this one definitely, I think, is a good choice for that, for that purpose. Um, but either way, it was, yes, it was seized up, and the uh, capacitor, I could see on the back, it was kind of bulged looking, and I actually, I have the capacitor here, and get a look at that, woo -hoo! definitely has some pressure in there, I really don't even want to be holding it right now, because I keep thinking, what if it just suddenly just ruptures? Not going to have a good day. But either way, that is the lovely old original capacitor from it. So, fortunately, it's the same exact size as a modern 2.5 microfarad capacitor. So, I was able to take the mounting bracket off and actually put the new capacitor in the original mounting bracket and use the little metal cap that snaps over top. So, it pretty much looks all original from the back now even though it's a brand new capacitor. So I'm happy with that. Um, and yeah, the whole motor, it needed a rewind. It was completely burned. I'm going to show some pictures and footage in this video after I get done this little discussion here. Uh, I'm going to show some of what it looked like as I took it apart. And you'll see it was pretty crusty. Um, so... The Model 163, this is the third one that I've had to rewind, and the Model 183, those those sizes, for whatever reason, seem like they have a pretty high failure rate uh, with respect to the other sizes of these fans. So, uh, if you find one that works, count yourself lucky, because I've gotten four, and three out of the four have been dead and burned, <laughs> so... Uh, it just seems like it's a common problem with these fans. Uh, but of the 163s, this, these later ones like this really seem to be a problem. These have, uh, the tag on them says that the motor is thermally protected. Now, normally you would think, oh, it's thermally protected. Excellent. I don't have to worry about it as much because if it gets too hot, the thermal switch will open and it'll cut power to the motor and it won't burn up. Well, with these, that's not so much the case. 
So in these motors, you've got, this is a six pole, but I mean, they're all pretty much like this for a single phase ILG um, for the PSC type motors. You've got two sets of run windings. And for this, you've got like three poles like this are one run winding. And then the other three in between are the opposite run winding. And you can connect them in series or parallel based on if you want the fan to run on 115 or 230, or if it's on 115 and you want it to operate as a high speed or low speed, you can do all that by how you configure the windings. Well, the, the way this fan was hooked up, it was hooked up in a parallel configuration. And the unfortunate thing about that is the thermal overload protector that they had in there was designed it was only in one of the two run windings so if the fan had been run or wired in series the current would have had to flow through the one winding first and then through the second winding through the thermal protector and out and if that thermal protector opened it would have cut power to it there would be no current flow but being that this was run in parallel there was one winding that would have opened, had been protected, and then the other winding would have been still trying to operate, it would have still had current flowing, and that one winding would have been trying to keep the motor rotating, but it would have been half the amount of power supplied to it. So that winding would have been overworked, and that's what happened here, it just burned up. And you can actually see it, uh, there's... I don't know if I have any video or pictures somewhere, but uh, it had three of the coils were still copper color and three of them were just black. And it's every other coil. So you could tell one of the run windings cooked and the other one didn't. So pretty interesting. Um, not the best design in the world, but uh, I rewound it. And hopefully this, this motor lasts a while now. Um, I had it running for quite some time and it, it really, it just gets barely a little bit warm, which I think is probably a normal temperature for a motor like this. It doesn't really get hot where it hurts to touch it or anything. Um, it's barely a noticeable warmth. So I consider that pretty good. I did make some alterations to the winding. There's the same wire gauge, same number of turns for all the coils, but the connections, I only pulled out, I pulled out six leads. I made it so that you have access to both ends of all of the windings. So you have both ends of the start winding, both ends of each of the run windings you have access to. Um, I just like that for if you have to do any troubleshooting, it's easier when you just have access to everything and you can separately check all the different components of the motor. So that's what I did. But you'll typically see these with five leads. You'll have number five will actually go to your capacitor. Number one, two, three, and four are for your two run windings. Um, the motor originally was a seven lead design. And it's something weird where they have it jump over. And it has to do with the, uh, the thermal switch on it. Um, I really never liked the, the whole seven lead motors like this. I think they're pretty terrible. Uh, if, if they're still working, uh, just keep an eye on them because you just never know with these. Um, but either way, yep, we're all good to go now. I'm going to fire this thing up so you get to hear it. It does actually run really smooth. The blade is slightly out of balance. Probably needs to be tweaked a little bit. But... Um, the motor has a really nice startup harmonic to it. I'm not, I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up on camera or not, but we'll give it a shot. So here we go. The Model 163 panel mount with a fresh re rewind. That's 1140 RPM. And I'll turn it off.
has a pretty nice spin down time now. It'll go for a little while. Um, so it's definitely going to be a nice running fan. I can't wait to have it all painted and, and actually get it mounted and use it. But uh, until then, it's just up here for display. Um, now I'm going to switch over and you'll get to see some of the previous footage that I was talking about with taking the motor apart and just some of the stages along the way, some pictures of different points in the rewinding process. All right, so here we go with some disassembly. We're taking the front end bell off. And of course, for this one, the rotor came with it, left the bearing in the rear housing. You can see the burned windings there. And here goes the rear end bell. And you can see how loose the windings are here. Everything's falling apart. All right, here we go. So I have the saw is put in the arbor backwards so that the teeth are actually going in reverse. And that is done on purpose because I do not want those teeth since the winding wire is so fine. I don't want the teeth to actually grab it and pull and then send this whole thing spinning around. I have had that happen one time in the past, and I guess you could say it was learning the hard way. So we're going to see how this goes here. Just go nice and easy. So it takes a little while, but um, it is definitely slicing nice and cleanly right through everything. So I'm just going to keep this going for a little while and get all the way around. Alright, so you can see here that every other pole is burned, and that's exactly what happened. One half of the run windings burned, one set. Uh, here's the parts after being sandblasted. And then I've applied a coat of insulating varnish to the stator laminations. Right here we've got the insulating slot liners installed. Next we have the run windings being inserted into the core. There's all six run winding poles finished. This is what it looks like as I wind the coils. And now we have the start winding installed into the stator. Here's another view with the insulating paper between the run and start windings. And another view. This is with everything laced together nice and tight. And again, now we have the leads coming out from the one end of the motor. This is another view with everything laced together and varnished. And one last view. And here we go for a start. hope you all enjoyed watching that uh, definitely was a interesting project to work on of course still probably not as interesting as the very sad 183 is about to be but we'll see how that one goes but until next time thanks for watching please like and subscribe and have a fantastic day